Hi guys, my name's Jamie Blewett. I run Jabby Military Antiques in Perth in Australia. Today we want to do a quick talk about the proposed Nazi and swastika ban that's about to be coming into Australia into the legislation. So look, all we're going to talk about today is what our opinion is. Everyone's got their own opinion on Nazism and the Third Reich. Let me quite categorically state we think what the Nazis did to the Jews and the other minorities in Germany and Eastern Europe was horrible. We don't support it in any shape or form. But what we're going to talk about today is what it means if this legislation comes into Parliament in Australia and is passed, what it's going to mean for collectors, dealers and the general public. So the first thing we want to talk about is a little bit of education. Because quite frankly, out there right now, most politicians and most people probably think anything with a swastika means that it's associated with death and destruction. Between 1933 and 1945, Germany was run by Adolf Hitler and the Nazis. Correct. However, they didn't go around murdering people for that whole time. They ran a civil service, they ran a defence force, and they ran a government. People went about their daily lives, people ate, they smoked, they listened to music, and they did all sorts of things, as normal people do. But what happened was, the Nazi hierarchy took it to the point where they decided who would live and who would die, and that's where the problem started. So let's look at some facts about what happened between 1933 and 1945 with three countries. First one, let's look at the Nazis. So you can see the swastika there on this police hat, which is what all policemen had to wear from about 1935 through to 45. So whether you're a, a supported Nazi or whether you weren't a Nazi or whether you're a communist or whatever, to keep your job, you had to wear one of these as well as a uniform. Now let's look at the, the figures. Between 1933 and 45, the Germans did murder between six and eight million people. The greatest majority of people that were murdered were people from Poland. Then you look at the number of people by religion. It's Jews, gypsies and po politicals. So before we start saying that the Jews were all murdered, where did they come from? Well, the majority came from Poland, which was an independent country up until 1939. That's the Germans. Let's look at the Russians. Here's a Russian medal, which is awarded for bravery. Awarded for bravery to people who were brave in the military or a long service medal. Between 1924 and 1953, under Stalin's regime, it's estimated between 20 and 40 million people were murdered. That's just civilians. And that was under Stalin. You can look at the facts and figures about how many were murdered under Lenin and after Stalin as well. That's a medal that you can legally buy today. Unaffected by a Nazi ban. Let's look at the Japanese. Here's a Japanese samurai sword. Something that if my grandfather saw me holding one of these while he was still alive, he would quite rightly take me out the back and give me a good spanking. His brother died at the hands of one of these. Why do I sell them? Well, there's a thing called freedom of speech in this country. That's why I sell them. I don't particularly like selling them, but I sell it because it's a part of military history. Let's look at the facts and figures, shall we? Between 1935 and 1945, in China, the Japanese murdered between 18 and 20 million. Now, whether that was through starvation or actual killing people, the Chinese lost nearly 20 million civilians. In 1937, in Nanjing, the Japanese, over the space of a few days, murdered between two and three hundred thousand people using this as their weapon of choice. 
Guess which one this legislation looks to ban? German? Russian? Japanese? All of the above? Well, it's just German. The Los Angeles Times, 24th December 1994, stated quite categorically that there were at least 10 to 15,000 German Jews that served in the Army, Air Force or the Navy, including two field marshals, 10 generals. And out of those people, there are at least 20 documented cases of Jews receiving the Knight's Cross, which was Germany's highest award. Now, why would those Jews fight for their country, given the fact that the people today trying to introduce this legislation say that the Jews had nothing to do with the Nazis. Well, I'd like to think that these Jewish people, who were Germans, first and foremost, actually had some national pride and wanted to fight for their own country. One of the members of my staff, his grandfather, was an officer in the German army during the war. He lost an eye and was, became disabled. Now, is he a Nazi? Or is he a war hero for being wounded and surviving? He brought his family out to Australia and his grandson proudly works in my business. What does that grandson think about his grandfather? Is he meant to think that he's a Nazi? Or is he meant to think that he's his granddad who fought for his country? You be the judge. Let's get out of the brass tacks of this. Why do people collect this stuff? Why would anyone in their right mind go and collect a medal that's associated with the death of 20 to 40 million civilians? Good question. I can only tell you from my years of experience as a dealer, they collect because they love military history. That's it. Ask any collector, why do you collect that stuff? Why do you collect marbles? Why do you collect Pokemon cards? Why do you collect cars? Well, they don't do it because they wake up one morning and think, hey, what a great idea to collect cars. They do it because they've got a passion for these things. Let me tell you, I've never met a person that collects Soviet memorabilia because they're communists. Never. Because I ask them. We don't get many people that collect. But those that do, collect it because they like the idea of collecting the military history associated with Russia. Also, why do collect, people collect Nazi memorabilia? They must be Nazis, you think. Well, I'll tell you what, in all my years of dealing, in all my years of collecting, I've come across three neo-Nazis. They don't collect, they got no money, they really don't have the intellect to be able to get a job. And you know what? When I hear them speaking their, their rubbish about the Holocaust never happening, they're out that door whether they want to leave or not. So let me tell you, quite categorically, Neo-Nazis don't collect Nazi memorabilia. Neo-Nazis talk crap. Neo-Nazis think crap. And quite frankly, I want nothing to do with them. No dealer wants anything to do with them. No one wants anything to do with them. I'm, I'm surprised that their mothers even return their phone calls, if they do. So you know what? I look at this and say to myself, you're a collector, good on you. I'm a dealer. I will sell you the items because they're military history collectibles. That's it. There's no other reason. Okay? Why do, why do people collect? Ugh, crikey. No. Why do people come into my shop and, and buy things? Why do, why do dealers sell things? Because that's part and parcel of commerce. Why does a car dealer sell a car to a person? Why, why does a travel agent sell holidays to people? Because it's part of commerce, it's freedom. You want to go on a holiday, you book a ticket. You want to buy a car, you go see a dealer. If you, there were no car dealers, you wouldn't be able to drive, drive a car. The same thing. If there's no dealers in the market, there's no collectors. Because if you can't buy and sell items that you freely own that are legal, what's the point in collecting? So where do we get to? Well, I can tell you right now that those people who have those items in their collection are probably rightly saying, 
what do I do with my worthless collections? What do I do with the medals and uniforms that my grandfather who fought in the war for the losing side, the Germans, what do I do with that horrible stuff? Do I throw it away or do I actually have some pride and keep it? Well, the way this legislation is looking, it's all going to be banned. And those people with it in their possession will rightly be thinking, I could be a criminal. If that's allowed to happen, then you can kiss goodbye to any freedom to collect anything. Because eventually when the war in, in Ukraine finishes, will these be banned? Will it take that to ban such horrible medals as this? Will the hammer and sickle be seen as something that's horrendous, even though it's from the past? Will we start banning Japanese swords? Will we start banning anything that's related to killing people? Will we start banning Australian items that, are, that, that may be connected with the killing of an opponent? Where does this end? Or is it time to, to draw a line in the sand and say, enough of this silliness, enough of the fact that, my, that, that the Attorney General, Mr Dreyfus, is Jewish and who, who would rightly want this to be banned, or is it a conflict of interest based on his religion? They're the questions that have to be asked. Because I would think the head law person in this country should be able to look past their religion and actually say to themselves, let's look at both sides of the argument freely. So what impact would a law have on collectors? Well, Mr Dreyfus is saying one year in, in prison for the trading of such horrible pieces as a hat like that. Some people think that's fine. Just think about the poor collector that, t that doesn't know about the rule, that turns up and, and gets $10 down at a swap meet and the police officer arrests him and he goes to jail for a year. Imagine the impact upon his family, his friends, his job, all the rest of it, for simply owning something for, that for the last lot of decades, we're talking 70 to 80 years, has been legal to buy and sell. Guess where all this came from? It came from your grandfather, your grandmother, your great-grandfather, your great-grandmother, who took these from the surrendering Germans. That's where it came from. They took it as a souvenir. They brought it home as, as, a, as a trophy of victory. That's where it's from. It didn't just magically appear from neo-Nazis are hiding in the corners. It didn't just appear from people that want to go out and kill minorities. This came as a trophy of war, rightly or wrongly. Do we ban it because of a symbol? Do we ban it because of a connection? Because I'll tell you what's going to happen if we do ban it. We're going to forget where it came from. We're going to forget why it represents a regime that killed millions of people. And if we do that, we can guarantee that someone out there is going to repeat what happened in the past. Or do we look at this logically and say to ourselves, we can understand that these things are abhorrent to some people and we can understand why people collect. We can take a middle of the road approach and we can say, let's cover a swastika if it's in public. Let's not make it so that people get offended by this because there are people that are offended by this, I understand. Rightly so, there are people that would be offended by this and by this and by everything else that's collected. So what do we do? Why should you care? Why should you care out there that anything is banned? Well, the whole premise of banning something is to help the public good. What is this doing to the public? Is it like drugs? Is it, is it causing a drain on society? Is it causing a drain at hospitals? Is it causing a drain in the prison system? Are police constantly going out and finding illicit cargoes of Nazi police hats? No, they're not. Bans mean exactly what they sound like. Finish, finito, no more. What would that do? Well, you can argue. But my opinion is that those wackos out there that might be hiding in the corners known as neo-Nazis, will have a good idea on why this was introduced. 
And won't they be justified in that after it's introduced? You decide. Because I can tell you right now, those people that come up with crazy ideas would be just the people that will come up with that connection. So what can we do? Well, you know what? If you're like the thousands of other people out there that collect any of this stuff in Australia or around the world, make your voice heard. Talk to your friends. Talk to your family. Ask them if you are a neo-Nazi. And if they say that you're not, which is probably the case, talk to your politicians. Tell them about your hobby. Tell them about the tens of thousands of dollars, or in some cases, millions of dollars, you've invested in your hobby. And if you don't want those investments in your time, in your effort, and in the products that you've got in your collection to be worthless, talk to the senators. Talk to the people that will be making these laws. Because if you don't, mark my words, it'll be banned, no questions asked, and you won't get another chance. You can certainly talk to us here at JB Military Antiques. We've been fielding hundreds of emails, phone calls, people coming to the shop asking us what's happening. We'll give you our opinion. We'll give you our unbiased opinion. Because really, we want this stuff to continue to be freely traded. We want people to be able to go to swap meets and auctions and not have to look over their shoulder and wonder whether the federal or the state police are going to arrest them. This is Australia. We live in a free country with freedom of speech, and that's how it should stay. Thank you very much. Have a great day.